a subscriber or viewer, I don't know if they're subscribed, pointed out that I forgot to upload the in-depth version of this video. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'll start off with this one. This is a Howard Miller Shelburne. It's a 1980s reproduction of a schoolhouse clock. Howard Miller made these from 1980 to 2000, a 20 year period of making these clocks, if I recall correctly. This uses a Hermley 341-020, Chimes Westminster, three train, eight days, that deal. And of course, the true schoolhouse clocks are next to it. We'll get to those. The term regulator has been slaughtered by clock companies, both Eastern and Western, over many years. Regulators were actually meant to be very accurate clocks. They weren't spring-driven like this Hermley is. They were weight-driven. They're much more accurate than this one could ever hope to be. This is a Seth Thomas short drop, as they're also called. Schoolhouse clock, short drop, uh, I think there's railway style is another way to call them as well. This was made by Seth Thomas. It has an 89 movement in it with modifications. Those 89 movements are very common. They're very easy to find here in America, at least. Runs for eight days. Strikes on a coil gong every 30 minutes, that means the half hour, and then it counts the hour. And it has a little window where you can view the pendulum swinging, so that's always nice. Next to it is a slightly newer version by the New Haven Clock Company. It's more of an Art Deco style, Art Deco, Art Deco, however you want to call it. I say Art Deco because it sounds fancier, and I'm quirky like that. Anyways... This is an example uh, that's kind of different than the New Havens you normally find in this style. This one says that it was made for Brantford, Ontario, if we just get closer here. Uh, so I don't know what that's all about. And if I open up the door, we can view the text here. I always read this for people who can't see it. Directions, 8 day time. After hanging this clock securely, hang ball on pendulum rod. Level clock until it ticks regularly. Put screw through back of clock into wall so that clock will remain level when wound. When setting clock, always move minute hand only. Hand may be set forward or backward. To make clock run faster, raise pendulum ball slightly by turning nut to right. Turn this nut to left to make clock run slower. Brantford, Ontario, the New Haven Clock Company, established in Connecticut, 1817. I don't have a nail because I'm savage and I can hold the clock level while I'm winding it because I'm not a freaking Neanderthal. This is my Arrow Schoolhouse novelty clock and it's next to its big brothers. It just has a little typical 30 hour German novelty clock movement in it with a very small uh, pendulum, flick pendulum as they're called I think. This is my Semka Mauta. It has a Mauta W-400 movement in it. Uh, there are variants of that movement that do bim-bam on two bells, but this is just a striking variant where it only strikes on one bell every 30 minutes. You can also silence it if you would like, and it runs for eight days. There's also some unfortunate repair jobs that have had to be done to it as you can probably tell and uh, I don't know what to tell you below it is its bigger brother I guess you could say this is a Friedrich Malte Schwenningen it was made in Germany by the same firm as this one just slightly different uh, this one was made uh, later than this one this one is more of like a 1920s type of deal. This one's more of like a 50s or 60s type of deal, the Semka. And this clock strikes bim bam. Very nice resonant chime rods. They go all the way to the bottom of the case, so they're very deep for the size of the clock. This is my Seth Berry Water Thomas. It's not going at the moment because I really don't like running it while it has that horrible, horrible duct tape on it, plus 
the duct tape stopped holding it up and it kept running too slow. So I just really need to get a new uh, suspension pendulum rod thingy. I think I could get that on Time Savers or something like that. But maybe you'll see more of this in the future. Maybe. This is my parents' Schneider cuckoo clock. I think they got it in around the year 2000. It has a regula movement in it. And it runs for 30 hours. It has an animated deer and an animated bunny. As well as an animated cuckoo as per typical cuckoo clock design. Next to it is an Elgin. This is an 8 day uh, drop dial. I don't know if I'd call that a drop dial, but eh, whatever. Uh, we'll just call it a drop dial for simplicity purposes. It's an 8 day drop dial wall clock with a Hermley 351-030, which is an odd Hermley uh, serial number. It's not dated, but I would guess 70s or late 60s. Uh, so, yep. This is my passive striking cuckoo clock. It cuckoos every 15 minutes. There's a passive cuckooing mechanism up here. You can see the bellows are actually beginning to lift up to cuckoo because it's almost 2.30, 1.30. I don't know how to read clocks. And that's the irony of this whole deal. But anyways, it uses your typical 275 gram weight. I think that's grams. And it's a flick pendulum. But despite it being a flick pendulum, it's actually pretty accurate. Until you wind it up, then it gets too slow because it pushes the minute hand back, but that's an easy fix. You just push it forward a little. The name on the movement is always fun to say, Helmut Kamarar. I am slaughtering it, and I know it, but I don't care. Sticking with novelty clocks, this is my Lux Pendulette with an interesting escapement. I'm fairly certain it's some kind of modified version of a duplex escapement. I have a video on it. Uh, you could probably check it out in the card that I'm likely going to put up here. But if I don't, you can just search through my channel. You'll find it. I leave these all off because they're noisy. But this little bird here, he moves around. If I can just uh, start it back up for you. See, he bobbed a little bit. The movement in this Lux is a modified variant of one that would have a, f a balance wheel. They also use these movements in clocks that were meant to keep time. Uh, little novelty clocks. This is my Jay Angstler Cuckoo... Er, cuckoo clock. My Jay Angstler Owl Clock has eyes that move back and forth as it ticks and yeah that's pretty much all I can say about it it's kind of creepy but I like owls and this one down here is a completely unmarked one it it says it was made in Germany I presume that this one is actually newer than all these ones here because doesn't have any markings, and it also has plastic gears, unlike these two. Thick plastic gears. It even has thick plastic pellets. Okay, and here's the one that everyone likes. This is my trend wall clock. It has a Hermley 1051-030 movement in it. I'm not sure what the variant of it is, but... It is a variant of a 1051-020. And it plays Whittington, St. Michael, and Westminster. Has your typical American style for the 1980s for the dial. This was a very common dial. Has spandrels. You would find these on like Howard Miller bracket clocks it's got the tempest fugit uh, badge it also likes to boast that it was made in the USA no 
it was not entirely made in the USA. The mechanism was imported from Germany, and the case was made in the USA. So, it's not true to believe that the entire clock was made in America, because it wasn't. Now this clock here was made in America. Hi, Freddy. So, this is a Seth Thomas Column clock, and it was made in probably the 1870s, I would guess. It has a very nice reverse glass painted uh, door glass here. It's patriotic to the USA. E Paribus Unum is on this drawing of an eagle with the United States flag and the United States flag on a shield. E Pluribus Unum is Latin for out of many, one. And inside, we can view an alarm mechanism. Seth Thomas, Thomaston, Connecticut, Warren to Good, the directions and all that. And the alarm dial. So this column clock has an alarm function. It has the same movement than OG, or OG, however you want to pronounce it, would have. Because it basically is an OG clock. It's just a variant of one, essentially. Okay, now moving way east. This is my Chinese bracket clock. No brand, no name. Just your typical mass-produced 30-day Chinese uh, movement. I'm actually not entirely sure if this is a 30-day movement or a 15-day movement yet. I haven't let it run down that long, I don't think, but I'm going to test that. I wound up all my clocks Friday morning, as in like 1 in the morning, and uh, I won't wind it next weekend, so I will find out. Unlike the most uh, common bracket clocks, this one doesn't strike on two chime rods. I got this one because of the peculiarity that it strikes on a coiled gong very oddly. But I like it because of that. So that's why I got it. Now this one, moving back to the west, this is an American kitchen clock made by William L. Gilbert. Presumably in the 1880s, 1890s, something like that. What's unusual about it is it strikes on a bell. And it just so happens to be the loudest clock in my collection. The loudest striking clock in my collection. It is loud. And on the door are some very nice markings of... I believe those are great blue herons, but... Ironically, I am not a bird expert. There's also some nice flowers and plants. It's like a little garden scene with these birds. It's very nice. I really love it. It's in outstanding condition. The movement seems to have been recently serviced. I even found someone's mainspring clip that they left just laying on the chime side movement, so... I think it was recently serviced. I've seen the, there's like new bushings in it. I put some fresh oil in it just to be safe. And it's been running outstandingly. This one, however, has not been running outstandingly. Uh, there's been a slight change since my collection update, as you might have been able to tell already. This is my 1973 WH tradition has a Hermley in it, a 1050-020, with a bad floating balance, or insufficient power from the time train. It goes too fast, even on the lowest regulation. So, when I get the funds, I'm just gonna pitch this 73 movement and put in a new one, because, quite frankly, I am sick of it. I'll keep the I'll keep the seventies one for spares though, and to practice rebushing because it definitely does need rebushing when I get the tools for that. And this is my electromechanical bulova. It uses an automat type mechanism. It's an electromechanically 
Sorry, it is... Uh, it uses a balance wheel that's transistorized. There we go. There's the word. It's a transistorized balance wheel. The balance wheel is what drives the clock rather than a spring. The magnetic field generated by coils around the balance wheel that has magnets on it is what drives the clock forward. And on top of it is my Casio G-Shock, specifically the WR200M shock resistant. This thing survived being run over by a car. It's my master clock. And here on the back it says water resistant, 20 bar. So 20 bars, I don't know exactly. I, I, I know that's like atmospheres, but I don't know how to say it properly. 20 atmospheres, I don't know, whatever. And made in China, yeah. So, that's cool. Oh, it's a G-2900, actually. Okay, well, there you go. This is my Hamilton Timbre mantle clock, which I'm fairly certain has a new movement in it. If I recall correctly, Hamilton Special ordered from Hermley. They had their movements marked with their logo and name. You know, like Howard Miller likes to put their name on Hermley movements. Hamilton wanted to try and do that as well since Hermley allowed it for a premium likely and this one is just simply marked Franz Hermley and it has the date code R which is 2005 if I recall correctly so this movement was made a year after I was born that's interesting at least they didn't say it was made in America but this clock truly was made in America it's a Waterbury Tambor mantle clock with a movement in it that seems to be inspired by uh, the French or the Germans. Unlike typical American clocks, it uses rack and snail striking. The movement is patented 1898 by the Waterbury Clock Company. There are different variants of this movement that strike on coil gongs. But this one just strikes on one chime rod. So, it sounds a little boring, but, you know, it looks nice. And it's an unusual movement, so that's why I wanted it. This is my mid-century modern Junghans wall clock. A drop dial, I would say, because there is part of the dial, I guess you could say, that does drop down, like so. A Westminster chime wall clock that runs for eight days it has a um, problematic movement in it I would say but I won't get into that <clears throat> this is my 30 hour baby cuckoo clock it's it is baby it's very small extremely small very typical cuckoo clock carvings the most notable thing about it is that it's small and cute. And that is Homer Bird. Here is another 30 hour cuckoo clock. This one is my musical variant. Uh, it's some kind of regula, but it's not marked, so it may have come, came directly from SBS Fine Technique, which manufacture regula movements. It plays Edelweiss and Somewhere My Love on, I think, a German music box, but can't remember 100% correctly. This is my Bulova alarm clock. It's in quite a state, but tonight I just got to taking the movement out and re-oiling it and all that jazz. So... I'm gonna see if I can get it to keep time, though I doubt it will with the state it's in. Moving along, this is my Seiko 30 day wall clock. Uh, we'll get to another Seiko 30 day wall clock. It shares the same movement. This one has a moaning ghost in it. That's from the 2020 Halloween party that we had in my English class. We made ghosts out of lollipops and tissues and zip ties those aren't zip ties that's a twist tie my bad 
But yeah, he's just vibing. Happy Halloween. Not much to say about this. I would call it a Seiko Loris because a while back, I do have footage of it. I recall there was a sticker here that said Seiko Loris, but I removed it because it was annoying and ugly. So, also the chime rods apparently are unusually tuned. I have a Seiko fanatic that told me it was very unusual for what it is. Too bad it's got some damage here. Uh, where's the other damage? Ah, right there. But, you know, it is what it is. It was $25, so why complain? This clock is a mystery. So, I'll just call it a European mantel clock. I've gotten so many, uh, like, findings on this movement. It could be Swiss, it could be German, the case could be British, I... I don't know, man. So, I'm just gonna call it European. It... it does have a really nice case, though. Next to it is a beehive mantel clock from the Sessions Clock Company of Forestville, Connecticut in America. This one strikes on a cathedral gong and a bell, like your typical early 20th century American clock would. Speaking of 20th century American clocks, this is another one by Seth Thomas under the name Plymouth. It has an 89 IL movement in it that features quarter striking. It's actually about to do it here pretty soon, so I'll let you hear that among the other clocks. Um, yep. You could call that petite sonnery. Plymouth made a lot of clocks during the Depression era. I think it was some kind of ploy by Seth Thomas to try and sell budget clocks. That's what I've been told, but I'm not entirely sure, so take that with a grain of salt. Okay, moving along back to the east, this is a Korean bracket clock which shares the same exact case as my Chinese bracket clock, interestingly enough. The movement was made by Daejin, or at least it's marked Daejin. It's meant to strike on two chime rods, but this happened, so it only strikes on one. Oh yeah, I don't think I mentioned it because I have short-term memory loss. I don't know if I did though. That's a joke, by the way. Uh, it runs for 31 days. This is my Vostok Komandersky wall clock. Submarine wall clock, I should say. It was made in the USSR. Mm, not much to say about it. I'll show you how it opens though, because I feel like that's necessary. It swings open like so, and then you have the access to the regulator here. It's got very Soviet styling anchor where the 6 would be, and a red star where the 12 would be. It also has the Vostok motif Komandersky. Sorry for my bad Russian pronunciation. And that exhibits a submarine with some, presumably, seabirds flying around it. The submarine is submerging from the water. Emerging. Emerging. Not submerging. Submerging is going down. It's emerging. Emerging. I can't English. I'm a native English speaker, but I still can't English. Anyway, we're moving on. And as I was saying, this is my second 30 days Seiko wall clock, made in Japan. The movement on this one is marked Seiko Sha. It might have some kind of Geneva stop contraption, unless those gears that I am seeing have something to do with these uh, power indicators. These are power indicators, they indicate to you the winding power on the time train. I think that's what those gears actually are. They're, they can't be Geneva stops. Um, so when they're blue, that means the power is all the way there. They're fully wound. When they're white, it means they're in progress of unwinding. And when it's red, it means it's time to wind it. Red has never seen the light of day, aside from me 
taking off the face to do various things. These two, bad, this sucks. $5 Chinese piece of crap, this sucks. The main America, very poorly. Shh. Crappy, I should say crappy riveted movement. You can't service it. It's a piece of junk. I'm not gonna chuck it. I wanna chuck it, but I'm not going to. It's a piece of junk though. Just take my word for it. Alrighty, moving along from the piece of junk. This is my AMS. Wag on the wall, it's an eight day wall clock. And it doesn't run for eight days because my ceiling is too small. I think my ceiling's about six foot four, six foot three. I'm very short, I'm five two. So I fit in here just fine, but not a lot of other people would. As your typical AMS pendulum, you find this pendulum on various AMS products from uh, a lot of their wall clocks. I believe this clock has the longest pendulum in my collection. I need to get some longer pendulum to clocks. Mmm, English. Anyways, the movement in this one was likely made by SVS Fine Technique. I am slaughtering the pronunciation and I don't care. Here's my 5 Rams Chinese alarm clock from the 1960s, I would guess. A lot of other people invested in alarm clocks would also guess the 1960s. This one was likely competing against West clocks. 5 Rams in Chinese is Wu Yang. That's what those two characters above 5 Rams say, Wu Yang. And there's their trademark, I guess you could say. All these clocks came from the same manufacturer, pretty much. They have the same exact movements in all of them, really. It's just a mass-produced Chinese movement, just like the one in my Chinese bracket clock. Mass-produced. Very effective at keeping time, though. It has only a few plastic gears, and those plastic gears are for something that barely ever moves, just the alarm time selector, so... It's pretty good quality for what it is. Right, and here is my 70s, if I recall correctly. West Clock's travel alarm. It is baby. It is baby. Um, 2.75 inches, if I recall correctly. Across and down, because it's a square. Um... I believe for my metric viewers, that's seven centimeters up and down. Okay, and this is my Japanese long drop. You can tell it's Japanese because they ripped off regulator A and just put it on their door. Regulator A, if I recall correctly, is something from Ansonia, which this is definitely not Ansonia. However, it does have an Ansonia rip off movement in it with the same type of construction. And, <coughs> excuse me, the trademark is a heart, many hearts actually, and then an H inside of it. Hearth is printed, or stamped I guess I should say, on the plates of this clock, along with someone very, very crappily trying to scratch in made in the USA, which is just, no, it wasn't made in the USA. Uh, yeah, so I think the Japanese may have confused the word heart and hearth. Hearth is like a fireplace type of deal. Heart is like, you know, that thing that goes in your chest. Uh, so there might have been a confusion there, but it, it's pretty interesting nonetheless. I got this from an antique shop in Stillwater, Minnesota when I was visiting a friend, a very close friend. Okay, and moving back to alarm clocks, this is my Seiko, uh, I'm not going to say that word, Melodia. YouTube doesn't like me saying that word. So, um, this is my Seiko Melodia wall, uh, wall clock, alarm clock, we'll say. It was made in Japan, it has two jewels somewhere in that movement, probably under the balance wheel, and... It plays Swan Lake. I'll just go ahead and demonstrate it for you real quick. Okay. 
So that is an alarm. Uh, if it were me, that would just serenade me back to sleep. Anyway, though, it uses a Sankyo music box made in Japan as well. So this is a fully Japanese alarm clock. Um, this is a West Clocks travel bin, and it has a very bad movement in it as well. Uh, it is a steel-plated, riveted piece of crap just to put it straight, and I hate it. It doesn't keep good time. The one next to it is slightly better. It was made by Tokyo Toke, Tokyo Clock in English, which of course Tokyo is in Japan, and it's retailed by Linden. And it runs for 30 hours. It tells the time around the world, so as you can see, it's almost two in the morning in Chicago, which is my time zone. Buenos Aires, it's almost four. And in Hong Kong, it's almost four in the afternoon. You can see all the different times around the world. Sydney, it's almost six in the evening. Honolulu, it's ten in the night. Ten o'clock at night, ten p.m., 2200 hours. Yeah. In Paris, it's nine... 900 hours, so yeah, nearly 900 hours. That's pretty neat. Yet again, another Chinese clock. This is a Chinese wall clock branded as Polaris. Has the same exact movement as the one in my Chinese bracket clock, except it's fitted with two chime hammers to hit two chime rods. And uh, Polaris in Chinese is Beiji Xing. I'm not doing the annotation that is required for your perfect Chinese, but, you know, here we are. Also, I didn't get you a very good view of the characters. Uh, here, let's just... There we go. Bei Ji Xing. And, of course, it runs for 31 days, as it says. I actually haven't let it run for 31 days, though, which I'm going to do. Here's one I almost forgot. This is my... Ingram black mantle clock. Uh, referring to it as an adamantine mantle clock, I've learned is incorrect because Seth Thomas apparently patented that styling. But you know what? I don't care. This is an Ingram ripoff of an adamantine mantle clock now. So that's what I'm just going to call it. <clears throat> Very typical early 20th century. American mantle clock has your bell on the half hour and your cathedral gong on the full hour. So, that's about it. That's every clock in my collection, pretty much. Aside from the broken ones, which I won't show because they're an embarrassment. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed listening to me babble absolute nonsense and broken English for 33 minutes and 30 seconds now. I will catch you later. Bye-bye.